So I'm Stephen Jackson. I'm United Nations Resident Coordinator here in Kenya. From 4 to 6 September, coming right up, we have the Africa Climate Summit, co-organized by the African Union and the Government of Kenya here in Nairobi. Why is it happening in Nairobi? Why is it so crucial that we have an Africa Climate Summit? There's a paradox. Kenya is on the front lines of the climate crisis. Kenya is on the front foot in proposing solutions. The same is true of Africa. Africa is on the front lines of the climate crisis. But Africa is also on the front foot in providing solutions. Africa contributes the least globally as a continent to carbon dioxide emissions and to greenhouse gases. And yet we know through drought, through heating, through the drying up of our water courses, Africa is suffering the most from climate change. And yet Africa is also the place where we're going to find the solutions. Africa has the second lung of the planet in the Congo rainforest. Africa has the biggest natural endowment of renewable energy resources. Kenya, where I work, is already at a massive 93% of her electricity being produced from green sources. Africa has the largest natural endowment of arable agricultural land that can feed the world. So for all these reasons, Africa is the place for solutions to the climate crisis. And Kenya is one of the leading voices in reshaping the narrative. Agendas like loss and damage remain crucial. Financing climate adaptation at scale for impact remains crucial. But going beyond that, the journey now is for Africa to provide solutions for itself and for the world to the climate crisis and for the world to bring the necessary financing at scale. So that's where the private sector comes in. We need financing on reasonable terms to bring Africa's climate solutions to scale to solve the world's problems. Right now, there isn't the capital, and when there is the capital, it costs way too much. So President Ruto's vision for this climate summit, the African Union's vision for this climate summit, is to go beyond the loss and damages agenda and the climate adaptation agenda, both of which remain very important, and to look at how we crowd in financing at scale to bring Africa's viable solutions to the global marketplace. There's so much that the world can learn and must learn from the kind of innovation that Africa and Africans already have for the climate crisis. As I've said, Africa and countries like Kenya have been on the front lines of that crisis for decades already. So there's much to learn already in the space of adaptation. There's much to learn already in terms of the pace of uptake of green energy and of the just energy transition. There's much to learn from how Africa has tackled the question of preserving its rainforest, uh, the Congo rainforest, one of the two lungs of the planet. And I would say that Africa has gone miles further in terms of that preservation agenda already. So in all of these ways and many more, there are solutions that African governments and that African peoples are bringing to the fore. This climate summit will put the magnifying glass on those and will crowd in the financing that we need and that Africa needs to take it to scale. For the developed north, it's clear. The developed north has to get much, much more serious about delivering on two sides of the same promise. One is to get serious about reducing its own carbon dioxide emissions. Africa doesn't emit anything like the CO2 that the developed world does. Uh, the developed world also has to get serious about financing for loss and damages and for climate adaptation. Those both remain crucial. But over and above those two, the real inhibitor 
to bringing the kinds of solutions that Africa has on sustainable energy, on sustainable agriculture, on CO2 absorption uh, and CO2 mitigation, therefore. Uh, the real break on bringing those to scale is the cost of capital and the inequities built into the present international financing architecture. On that point, the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, the Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohamed, and His Excellency President Ruto are all singing the same hymn, that the cost of capital has to come down and the quantity of capital has to go up to Africa so that these solutions can urgently be brought to scale. So this climate summit is in many ways a financing summit.